Hi, my name is Robin. I'm the author of eight books on kingdom living, how to walk in God's supernatural presence and power, and how to pursue your passion and take the Holy Spirit into your field or your business in the marketplace, and so that the Holy Spirit has no borders. So today I am going to share on forgiveness, the power of forgiveness, and the power of God's love. <clears throat> The first thing I want to share is that the reason that we want to forgive is Christianity is all about a relationship. It's all about a father and his son. And when we ask Jesus to come into our heart and we're born again, we are cre recreated and we are in the image of God and we are filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is God. It's God's Spirit living inside of us. <coughs> Excuse me. And Ephesians 4.30 says, Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God. We are sealed in the Holy Spirit. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away with, from you in malice. And be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. So the reason that we want one of the reasons we want to forgive, and one of the reasons we're able to forgive, is because Christ forgave us. And we don't want to grieve the Holy Spirit. It's being in a relationship with the Holy Spirit like being in a relationship with your spouse. You don't want to do anything that hurts them. And we have power to forgive. Uh, because Jesus forgave us, we now are empowered to forgive others. He's our example. And in Colossians 3.12, it says, Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing one another, and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you. So, <clears throat> there again, we are supposed to forgive because we are empowered to forgive because Christ forgave us. And remember, it's all about a relationship. And if you have a relationship with God through the Holy Spirit and you have unforgiveness towards somebody, that unforgiveness is going to make your heart feel condemned. And when your heart is feeling condemned in this relationship with the Holy Spirit, you're going to feel as though your prayers are not being answered or that you have no right to ask God uh, for something. Colossians 3, 5 says, let the peace of God rule in your hearts. Well, if you have unforgiveness towards somebody, that's not hurting the person you're not forgiving. It's only hurting you because it is separating you from God. You're going to not have peace in your heart. And you have to remember that everybody is created in God's image. God is not poor. He's not weak. He's not sick, deceased, sad, depressed, or powerless to change situations and circumstances. And people are created in His image. And when you forgive people, <clears throat> excuse me, you are honoring them. You are honoring the Holy Spirit in them. Even if they're not saved, you are honoring them as God's creation. First John 2.10 says, He who loves his brother abides in the light, and there is no cause for stumbling in him. Now, when you are unforgiving, you will stumble. You will reap more of what you're putting your attention to. You're putting your attention on what they did wrong to you, and your unforgiveness and how angry you are and how stupid it was what they did. And you're going to have more of that back. And it will cause you to stumble. And remember, once again, it's about a relationship. God loves you and he won't unadopt you because you mess up and make mistakes. You're still his child. And you have to look at people the same way. They're part of the family. You love your family. You love your kids. You love your parents, even though they make mistakes. And so look at the people as part of your family. In 1 John 4, 1, um, 9 and 11, it talks about how God is love, and he sent his son into the world, <clears throat> excuse me, his only begotten son into the world, that we would live through him. And this is the love, not that we love God, but that he loved us, and he sent his son for us, for our sins. And it goes on to say that if God loves us, we should also love others. We have never seen God, yet we love him, and we see others, and yet we don't love them. Now, the other reason to, to walk in forgiveness and instead uh, of unforgiveness, walk in love is faith works through love and <clears throat> love gives you confidence to pray and love casts out fear. So you want to walk in love and in, for, and in forgiveness rather than hate, anger, and bitterness and resentment because you want your faith to work. You don't want it to separate you. And then finally, um, 1 John 4, 17. <coughs> Excuse me says this, that love has been perfected in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, 
because as he is so are we in this world and there's no fear in love so if you're finding yourself getting in fear maybe there's somebody in your heart that you have not forgiven and when you forgive that perfect love casts out fear now we're not talking about your perfect love because you can't have perfect love we're talking about the love of God inside of you casts out fear remember God is love and he doesn't want he doesn't send us any harm he doesn't want us to be harmed sin has consequences and when you're being unforgiving uh, you're walking not in forgiveness not in love you're sinning and sin always reaps death for you in some way or another so remember it's all about relationship it's all about forgiving if your heart does not condemn you you have confidence toward God and what you pray you have because you have that confidence toward God so get away from unforgiveness it doesn't hurt anybody but yourself well, instead walk in God's love and you have the power to forgive because God gave it to you my name is Robin Bremer net is my website subscribe wherever the button is and um, check it out and have a